All right, so today we are looking at lesson 06. This is a review of last year. We are going to look at congruent and similar figures. The reason we look at this topic to start the year is because it involves ratios. And ratios are an important part of being able to solve for a missing part of a problem. So we're going to look at cross multiplying skills and we're going to look at problem solving skills in this lesson. So congruent, what does congruent mean? Congruent means that figures have the same size and the same shape. So again, they have to have the same size and the same shape. When writing the symbol for congruent, it's an equal sign because the shapes are equal. And then we put the tilde symbol on top because they're equal in all ways. We say the two figures are congruent if their corresponding sides and angles are congruent. So we talk about figures being congruent and we talk about corresponding sides and angles. Similar, similar figures that have the same shape but are not the same size. Similar figures have the same shape, but are not the same size. The similar symbol is just the tilde. Similar figures have corresponding angles, so all of the measures of the angles are the same, but the ratio lengths of the sides are proportional. The ratio lengths of the sides are proportional. Okay, a congruent statement. This is a statement that lists the congruent angles and sides of a shape. So in the case of a triangle, you have three congruent angles and three congruent sides. So if we start with the angles, we can say that angle B because it has one mark, is congruent to angle F. Angle A has two, and so does angle E. So angle A is congruent to angle E. When listing angles, we all have, we have to list the symbol in front. And angle C is congruent to angle D. We also know that the sides are congruent. When we label congruent sides, we go from one angle to the next. So if I go from B to C,
Then we go from F to D. B to A, D to E, and A to B, so E to F. So again, when labeling sides, you need to put the um, line segment symbol above. And then it says map the vertices of the congruent angle. So I think opening my um, PowerPoint up in the program I'm opening it kind of glitched out some of my symbols because those should have been deltas or triangles. Not X's. So it's triangle, and you always want to list them in the order their angles match. So I could do B, A, C is congruent to F, E, D. You could go backwards. You could say C, A, D, and then you'd have to say B, D, F. Or you could start in the middle and say ABC, and then you do EFD. But again, you have to make sure that when you list them, that the angles match their congruent angle as well. Okay, so let's determine if the polygons are similar. Justify your answer. So we have the polygon on the left, whose ratios of its sides would be 2 to 5. And then we have the polygon on the right, so its ratio of its angles are 16 to 40. In order to compare them or see if their ratios are the same, we need to reduce them to their simplest form. So two fifths is reduced. It does not get smaller. But 16 and 40 both divide by 8. So you divide both by 8 and you get two fifths. Then 16 over 40 reduces to two fifths. Then these are similar polygons. In example three, we see the angles. So we know that this top angle here matches this top angle there. Our bottom angles match as well. So that helps me when comparing my sides. Remember the angles and sides have to match. So we can compare the angle sides. So we'll compare eight to 30. It's like comparing 6 to 16 and 10 to 34. You always want to, and again, you could have done these differently. You could have had 8 over 6 and 30 over 16. So you can mix them in different ways. You just need to make sure that you keep the triangles grouped together. So if this was triangle A and B, and the top set of ratios, A is always on top and B is always on bottom. Over here, you're comparing A to A over B to B. So you just need to make sure your comparisons match.
can read it on my stuff. All right, so if we have 8 over 30, that both divide by 2, so it reduces to 4 15ths. Comparing 6 to 16, they also both reduce by 2, and you get 3 eighths. 10 over 34 becomes 5 seventeenths. Are these fractions the same? No, not even close, but they are not similar. And where it says to justify, your justification is the ratio comparison. So the city of Mansfield plans to build a bridge across Pine Lake. Obviously, they cannot measure the lake, so they use angles and diagrams to help them. So what they're going to do is we know... We have a smaller triangle in here. So we have triangle A, B, C. So we can use triangle A, B, C at the top to help me investigate triangle A, B, C. So we're gonna use the little triangle to help us compare the small so in order for us to look at the large triangle, we have to take the line segment AB and line segment BD and add them together. So 150 and 110 is 260. And then what we're going to do is we'll compare side length 110 to side length 260. And then you're going to compare side length 40 to the one we're looking for. And we'll call that X. So when you have a proportion set up like this, our instinct is to solve for x. You want to find the missing part. In order to find the missing part, we're going to cross multiply. So you get 110x equals 40 times 260. And actually, if you've never seen it, or watch this, it's okay, you can write down what I wrote. I just don't have any erase it on this one. It's super weird. If you have a number that has a zero at the end of both the number on top and bottom, 110 over 260 actually reduces to 1126. So anytime you have that happen, so I could have like 1000 over 110 and I could cancel out those zeros and that's the same oh it's all like two good thank you that's the same as 100 over 11. so if you're doing this with mental math again it kind of helps to reduce that fraction then you get 11x equals 40 times 26 Divide both sides by 11, and we get x equals, I don't remember. Can I calculate it out? I have one out there. Um, so to calculate it out, multiply and divide. Yep. Yes, 
let me sign those out to you. Um, give me one second. Because I don't have, like, you don't want this one. This is the old one. I'll just grab the quick one. Okay, so you get 94.54. And units in the problem are meters. So you have to make sure you put an M for meters. So again, just make sure you watch out that your proportions are correctly and their order matters. Um, take a minute and think about the concept of similar congruence. Describe how they are the same and how they are different. So again, we're just kind of thinking out loud. Nobody else to write anything down. Um, similar means that their shapes are the same. Congruent means they are identical. So we are similar in terms of people. All people are going to have similar features. We all have our hands, our feet, our torsos, legs, etc. But we are not congruent because we all have different body types. So you can compare the two words even just in English. Make sure you set your proportions up correctly. Your homework is in the book. So what I'm going to do, if you want the book, today's the day. If not, um, you've seen that the book's on Fusion Flex. I showed you that last week. Your book is also out on Teams. So if you go into the Teams app and you go into our class, go under General, if you go to Files, the textbook is right in there. You can just open up Chapter 0. So I'll do that for you today. So we're going to open up our textbook. We're going to go to 06. And you guys are working on the problem down at the bottom. If you don't want to look back and forth, you can um, do this on your own device. The numbers get a little small. Again, you're on page, I believe, P16, doing 1 through 12. 